Right? Four, if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unproductive. If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unproductive. So put a mark there. Right. Welcome to our Bible study. Glory to God. We are continuing from where we left. Glory to God. Uh, on Sunday, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you all for joining in this live Bible study. I'm your host, Pastor Lo. It's been such a privilege and an honor to share the word of God. I enjoy doing what I do. Glory to God. I can preach all day. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I enjoy the word of God. There's nothing that I enjoy more than the word of God. There is absolutely nothing. To me, the word of God is just phenomenal. It's just powerful. Right. We are in First Corinthians 14, 14, but I want to read quickly the guideline that Jesus gave his disciples, right? The guideline of how to pray, right? It's a guideline. It's not the Lord's prayer. Many have said it is the Lord's prayer. It is a guideline. Glory to God. It is a, a guideline. Now, let's go deeper. This, ha, 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 ha. 9 of um, Matthew 6, yeah? We are in First Corinthians 14, 14, right? But I just want to go somewhere. We are looking at temptation, right? After this man are therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven. After this man, it's giving them a guideline. In ancient times, like during the days of uh, the Israelites and the Jewish religion, of in Islam, they do, the, they do this thing. They have prescribed prayers. These are guidelines. They do them. They follow them. Now, Jesus, you know, take a spin from, from that. He brings us to a very powerful guideline, right? After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, right? So that, that's the first thing that we need to know. When you are praying, God is in heaven. We are on earth. Heaven is higher than heaven. The heaven is higher than earth. So you are inviting heaven, right? in that situation, in that circumstance. That is what Jesus is saying. Our Father who art in heaven. Now, the other thing that Jesus brings into play is our Father. Right? The Jewish religion never called God Father. So it's a relationship. It has uh, changed. Glory to God. Uh, there has been a change from religion to relationship, right? right. Our Father who art in heaven. Like, Hallowed be thy name. His name. Now, the name here. It's not the name of the Father. No, no, no. The name is Jesus. Remember, when we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus. The name Jesus means God. God is saved. Right? Hallowed is thy name. That name is holy. is sanctified. That is the name. That when you mention it in prayer, demons tremble. You might not see. When you say Jesus, the devil hates that name. Because that is the name that conquered you. That is the name that rose and conquered the grave. He rose and conquered the grave. Yes. So that is the name that is hallowed. Right. So yeah, when we pray, our oh, Father, what in heaven, how low it is that name? If we don't know this, it's, it's just a waste of time. <laughs> Glory to God, it's a religion called conquest. Yeah. Now the next line, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come. That is God's plan and purpose. Remember when we were interpreting those tongues that he wants his glory to be revealed through us. The kingdom of God is already on the inside of us, right? So he wants to manifest the kingdom through you. If we can comprehend it and understand it, wherever you go, you are a manifestation of the kingdom. The enemy does not want you to know these things, right? He doesn't want you to know. That's why we are dealing with the temptation. We have to deal with these things. We have to grow up. We have to mature. The kingdom of God is upon each and every child of God. Even the one who is born again yesterday or today or five minutes ago, the kingdom has come upon them, right? Thy kingdom come. Here, Jesus says, thy kingdom come. Because that is the plan of God to bring the kingdom. Watch this. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. This is prayer. This is guideline, right? Thy will be done in earth as it, in he as it is in heaven. That's why Jesus never had flu. <laughs> Glory to God. That's why Jesus was never sick. That's why Jesus would walk on water. That's why Jesus raised people from the dead. Why? Because he operated heaven on earth, according to heaven on earth. He brought the kingdom wherever he went. So this is the purpose of prayer, to bring heaven on earth, right? Thy kingdom, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There is peace in heaven. 
There is no chaos in heaven. There is joy in heaven. There is no strife in heaven. Glory to God. So we have to understand the atmosphere of heaven. We are bringing heaven on earth. We are bringing heaven on earth. Thy will be done. So it's no longer my will. It's no longer your will. So when you are praying, if you are not sure, you, this is the place where you want to be seeking the will of God. You want to be finding out the will of God. This is where you come, where I spoke of the law of placement last year, if you remember. And I always talk about it when I'm talking about Ruth and Naom, you know, Moses and Joshua. That's why in life, as a Christian, you always need believers that are seasoned, that have been there. They can help you to guide you, to bring you into that place where you can discover the will of God for your life. Whatever the enemy is after, the temptation, is what God created you to do, right? That's what the devil is after. Forget who is fighting you. <laughs> Glory to God. There is an enemy that wants you not to get into your God-ordained purpose. So this is what Jesus is addressing here. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, the will of God for your life, what is God's will for your life? What are you called to do? We are not called to wander around like Cain. Cain became a vagabond, right? Or vagabond, right? We are not called to be like him. No, God created you for a reason, for a purpose. You are here on earth to manifest greatness. Oh, glory to God, I love this. You are here on earth to manifest greatness. That's why you are here. There is something inside of you. The spirit of the Lord in the hearts of men. Something more than God. Something more than God something more than God. There is something more than gold on the inside of you. Something more than gold. But what are people seeking after? Gold, right? They are seeking after the things of this world. That's why this guideline is very important. Because if you are already not operating in the will of God, you cannot cross over to, to temptation because you're already in a place called temptation, right? Because temptation is to be outside the will of God. So we might need to start praying dangerous prayers you know, where we are now. Lord, am I in your will for my life? Or oh, where I am is a permissive will. Glory to God. This is something that you need. It comes from, number one, our Father who art in heaven, that relationship, right? Don't be religious. It's not a religion. Christianity is not a religion. Relationship. Because as you walk with God, I have uh, a said like name, right? When you are lost, it will tell you rerouting, rerouting, right? You no, know, in America, route. They use instead of route, they use route, <laughs> rerouting, right? It, it it brings you back, right? It tells you take take a left. You you are lost. You are going the opposite direction. That is what you get when God is your Father. You are in a relationship with Him. You are seeking Him. He is in heaven. You are on earth. But if you are going your own way, glory to God. You are already in a place of temptation. That's where many people are. And if you are religious in your understanding of Christianity, again, you are lost. You need to come back to a relationship with God. Jesus did not die for us to have another religion called Christianity. He died for us so that we can have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, live on the inside of us, so that God can dwell on the inside of us. Glory to God, so that we can become the house of God. You are the house of God. Glory to God. You are in a relationship with the Father. So refuse. To be religious and refuse to pray religious prayer. Glory to God. It's a relationship. God is good. God can take your questions in the name of Jesus. As long as you come to him genuinely, you are seeking answers, you are seeking solutions. Say, Father, I don't understand this. I want you. What God cannot take is when you think you are on the right road and you, 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 you know yourself that there is no peace, there is no joy. Now you start pretending to everybody else. You will be fooling yourself. Glory to God. You will be fooling yourself. When you know you haven't gotten it, this is powerful. When you know you haven't gotten it, ah, no, I've not really gotten this thing. That's when you be still. Em no, dara, em God, be still. Em no, I'm God. Glory to God. You become still in his presence, right? Be still. You seek mentorship. You seek people to counsel you. Because if you know there is no peace, you know in your knowing that, no, glory to God, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it here, God. You are already in a place called temptation. You are there. So you are not fighting temptation. No. All you need is repent, right? It's to repent. Repentance is not, um, you know, repentance has become a bad word in Christianity. I don't know why. Something powerful, something good, something great. Repentance is just to change your mind or change direction. Say 180 degree turn around. Glory to God. Because if you don't repent and you continue in the same same leg, God will not intervene with you. 
You will be continuously sending people. He's not going to force you to turn. No, you are already lost. That's why, let's go deeper. Right? If you are in unforgiveness, already you are lost. Because you see, in a heart, in our heart as Christians, that glory of God cannot be revealed in our heart. The will of God cannot be manifested when we dwell in unforgiveness, when we dwell in bitterness. Sometimes I wonder how. How some Christians really can pray when they are in unforgiveness or when they are bitter. I don't know. Me, I fail, I fail to pray even when, you know, you know, I don't offend my wife when she has offended me. You know, I'm holy. <laughs> glory to God. Brother holiness or brother righteousness. <laughs> glory to I, 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 I find it hard to pray. You know, some some can. I don't know somehow how they, they do. I, I was really looking at this today. I said, Lord, how can some people manage to pray when they are in unforgiveness, when they are in bitterness? You know, I could not find suitable answers, but what I saw is this, they are religious. Glory to God. They are already used to being religious. You know, they don't realize they have not come into a relationship with me. The reason being, I thought God is light, right? And in him, there is no darkness at all. So if I'm in a place of offense, if I'm in a place of unforgiveness, how can I be walking with God? How can I be walking with him as light? How? It means I've deviated from him, right? We are talking about temptations here. Glory to God, right? Now I'm not yet there, but this is where we are. We are going, glory to God. So if I'm in unforgiveness, I'm in bitterness, how can I have fellowship with God? Because prayer is fellowship, right? It's a relationship with light. How can you have relationship with light and be in darkness, right? God is love. How can I be in fellowship with love? The one who forgave me at the cross and still be in darkness. See, I submit to you what I submitted to myself when I was really meditating on this message today, that maybe, maybe I have a law in my eye, glory to God. Maybe I'm using the law to judge my brother. As far as I'm concerned, me, I am right. I am good. That's why I can still go to God. I can still pray. I, I, I think I'm praying, but because I need to qualify this because I'm thinking I am praying, glory to God. I'm thinking I am praying because really, I, I, it's, it's hard. If God says, when you stand praying, forgive, and me, I'm in unforgiveness, so that your heavenly father can forgive you, right? When you stand praying, forgive. Uh, maybe if, 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 we, if we go with the Lord's prayer, we shall find out. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive our debts as we, see, just forgive us as, as we forgive. So if I am in unforgiveness, I'm already trapped. I'm already in temptation, right? I'm already there. What I need is to repent, to come back. See, when we are dealing with temptation, we are dealing with people that are actually walking in the right path that the enemy is trying to tempt them into unforgiveness, that the enemy is trying to tempt them into bitterness, that the enemy is trying to tempt them into anger, that the enemy is trying to tempt them into coming out of the will of God, that the enemy is trying to tempt them into doing their own will instead of the will of God, right? But when we are dealing with those that are in unforgiveness, those are already in a place called temptation. They need to repent. They need to change. They need to, to come back to the kingdom of God. They can pray in tongues. And they need to. <laughs> it won't work. <laughs> Glory to God. Because you see, faith works through, through love. Faith works through love. Glory to God. There has to be a change. Right, 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 right. Let's go back. Zoom, zoom. Rewind the tape a little bit. Now, I think uh, Matthew 7 then comes into play. Right, Matthew 7 comes into play because we are here, we are in uh, Luke, Matthew 6, right? So I think Matthew 7 comes into play here. This is what Jesus says, judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again, right? Verse 3, which is powerful, right? This is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, how can people pray when they are in bitterness? How can they pray and really say they are experiencing God, they are walking with God, when they are in unforgiveness, when they are offended, when their heart has taken offense, how? How can they even receive the word of God in their heart? Right? Because the heart is the soil. Remember, the sower goes to sow a seed. How, how can they do this? So this is what I want to address, how? Now, this is what I was thinking about. Glory to God. You are free to have your own answer. <laughs> Glory to God. But this is what I feel the Holy Spirit was giving me. It says, why beholdest thou the moat in, in thy brother's eye. And consider it not the beam 
in thy own eye. See, says you have a law in your eye, and you how can you see the speck in your brother's eye? See, when I'm in unforgiveness, you see, God is not saying here in Matthew 7, just not that we should not judge. No, 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 no. That's not what God is saying. No, 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 no. God wants us to judge. Glory to God. But he wants us to remove the law. He wants us to remove the law, right? But if I have a law, I think that's why we can pray, right? I have a law. Lee comes, as I just said, right? Brother holiness, brother righteousness, that uh, the wife has offended me. So I can still go in the presence of God. Shanda, Rama, Shanda, Lord, you don't understand. This wife, when she, when she got me, you know, she, she got a checkpoint. Kaya Lambros, Kelebraka. She is the one who is the problem, right? That is the law that I'm talking about. That is the law. Now, the question then is, now watch this. The question is, Jesus, right, when he was hanging on the cross, he says, forgive them for they know not what they were doing. The question is, who is me before Jesus? What did Jesus do? Glory to God. What did Jesus do to get me where I am? Right? But if I'm under a legalistic system, because Matthew 7 is written for the Jews, they were under the law, right? So the law is, I can fast, I can tithe, I can do this. The law is the outside of the cup is clean, but the inside is dead. That is the law. But if I'm under such a legalistic system, already when I am praying, right, I don't see the law. I'm seeing other people is the problem, right? I'm seeing other people as the offenders, right? Me, as far as I'm concerned, I'm holy, I'm righteous, glory to God. I'm all that God really got a check for when you want me, right? It is the other people that are wrong. Right? This is what Jesus was addressing before he even went to temptation. Forgive us as we forgive, right? I have to realize when I walk with Jesus Christ each and every day, not to be conscious of sin, not to be conscious of what I did wrong, but to be conscious of his power, to be conscious of his glory, to be conscious of who he is, glory to God, to be conscious of what he did for me. When I understand this, it's easy for me to repent. It's easy for me to come back to Christ. But you see, if I'm under the law, because that's where the problem is. Many people don't understand grace. They don't understand what Christ has done. Even when they are praying, they don't understand. Even when they are praying, they are coming to go through their own strength. They are coming to go through their own ability. That's where frustration comes in, they become frustrated. Glory to God. Even when they are praying for other people, you have already judged them. You already know why they are having the problem that they are having, because there is a law, right? This is what Jesus is talking about, that you have to remove the law. When you have removed the law, then can you, can you help to take off the speck from your brother's side, right? Right, right, right. Glory to God. Let's go back. Let's go back. Glory to Jesus. Ha, 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 ha. Those that are joining us, welcome. Glory to Jesus. Ah, where was I? Ah, ha, 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 ha. Verse 13, verse 13, verse 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is thy kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It says the kingdom, the power belongs to God. Right, but when we have been led to temptation, there is no manifestation of the glory, there is no manifestation of what of the power of God. What God wants to give us is His power, His glory. What good is it, the power and the glory to be in heaven? No, God wants to manifest His power and His glory in us, so He wants to lead us out of temptation, right? He wants to deliver us from Him. Now, this is where the, <laughs> the rubber meets the road. Glory to God. This is where many people struggle. Lead us not. It's always, oh, don't lead me. Not. That thing is still tempting me. Could it be God is allowing you to be going through the same thing that you are going through so that you can master it? Wow. <laughs> Could it be? Could it be? The same struggles that you face year in, year out. What is waiting for you to pass the test? Because you see, you can't graduate you and get you to form one or year seven, if you cannot pass year six. It's not like in England that every student there say, ah, this was all, you are good when you know they are dull and dangerous. No, <laughs> God is a system, glory to God. He will allow you to, to, you will retake the test over and over again. Lead us not into temptation. 
glory to God, but deliver us from the evil one, right? So this is where we are. See, same thing over and over, over and over. God is waiting for you to pass. Do you know why? Say why, <laughs> why? Glory and power, glory and power. He wants to manifest his glory and power through you. He wants to manifest his glory and power through you. But, but what's this? If you cannot forgive people, right? You are easily tempted, glory to God. And there is a manifestation of power. There is a manifestation of glory. What's going to happen? You want to destroy people with that power, with that glory, right? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 3. Ah, 1 Corinthians 3? No, let's start from 1 Corinthians um, 2. We ended in 3 on Sunday, right? It's always a continuation. 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2. Glory to God. Ah, there's a version that I was reading from. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, yes. I want us to look at verse 15, and we'll cross over to chapter 3, right? Right. I said, why somebody put why there, right? Because God wants to manifest his glory and power. Now look at verse 15 of 1 Corinthians 2. But he that is spiritual judges all things, right? Watch this. Look at the connection now. Look at the connection. Remember Matthew 7, judge not. Now, 1 Corinthians 2, 15. But he that is spiritual judges all things. Is God confused. Now, in Matthew 7, he's telling us not to judge. Here he says, he who is spiritual, judges all things. Do you know why? In Matthew 7, judge not. He was talking to people that were flesh. You can't see and discern things through the flesh. Immaturity. There can be no manifestation of the glory of God when you are still in that place of temptation. You are operating according to the flesh. God wants you to be spiritual. Because when you are spiritual, then your judgment it becomes God judging, right? It is now God acting out. It is now the glory and the power of God revealed through you. God is not on earth, meaning in terms of we God on earth singing. He is on the inside of us. He is on earth through us. So he wants to manifest that glory, that power through us. So the temptation, lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from Eve, for thine is the kingdom. The kingdom. It's not just his. No. <clears throat> we are God's children. We are heirs of God. We are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. The kingdom is not just his. It is our kingdom. We belong to the Father. We belong to him. He wants to manifest his kingdom through us. And the way he can do it, the kingdom is spiritual at the moment. It's not flesh. The kingdom is not manifested through the flesh. So the plan of the enemy is, he wants you to be flesh, operate according to the flesh, right? He will lead you to that temptation. You will always be tempted. This is in the flesh. Glory, ah, no one can do this to me. I will respond. <laughs> they don't know who I am, right? You are responding in the flesh, right? Then you cannot judge because you start destroying people, right? You start destroying them. But when you are spiritual, what's this? But he that is spiritual judges all things. I love the next part. I love the next part. There is a comma there. Yet he himself or herself is just by no man. He who is spiritual, no one can judge you when you are spiritual. Why? Because you are now operating according to spiritual senses. You are no longer operating according to the flesh. Glory to God. So the temptation, that is always, oh Lord, deliver me from this. God is saying, no, glory to God. You overcome it. You overcome it. Come to the revelation of who you are in me as you meditate on the word of God, as you grow on that milk of the word. I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, let me not get ahead of myself. We are going there. Now, let's look at verse 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Right? That he may instruct him. Who has known the mind of God that he may instruct him? Remember, what does God want to do? His glory manifest in us. Then what do we do? What do people do when they are praying? They are asking God, like, oh God, if you could move. Oh God, if you could do this. Oh God, if you could descend. Oh God, if you could heal, right? Look at what verse 16 says, right? Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? God is waiting for us to instruct him 
That is what God is waiting for. Maybe you've been praying for a long time. God says, listen, you have not been instructing me. I have got nothing to work with. You are not instructing me what you want. You're not instructing me. Mark 11, right? 23, right? What does he say? Whosoever shall say to this mountain, you are instructing mountain. But go to churches, listen, audit prayers, find out how many people are speaking to mountain. They are telling God, oh God, the doctor said they will chop off my leg. <laughs> you know, the doctor said I'm only left with two months to die. See, that is not prayer at all because they don't understand the guideline of prayer that God wants to manifest the kingdom through them, that the will of God in heaven is not your leg to be amputated, that the will of God in heaven is not for you to, to, to suffer loss and to be in stress, to be in depression. I don't understand. It's a religion. Glory to God. That's what I say. They need to take the look off their eyes so that they can see God, so that they can relate with God as their father, right? So that they can know that this name, which is hallowed, is the name of Jesus. It is powerful than any dark force. It is powerful than any medical report. It is powerful than anything that can be coming against you. They don't know. They say it, but they have not come to the revelation of it. Right? If they come to the place where they are spiritual, they understand the spiritual thing. You say, no, 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 no. I'm not taking this nonsense. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. The Lee comes I felt that in Jesus' mighty name. Now, for who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has known the mind of the Lord? This is what I was talking about. That how can I know the mind of the Lord, right? How can I? I know the mind of the Lord. You see, I want to be fast because I want to talk about Abraham a little bit. How can I know the mind of the Lord? And the mind of the Lord and walk in unforgiveness. How? How can I know the mind of the Lord and I'm walking in unforgiveness? How? How can I know that mind of the Lord and walk in bitterness? How can I know the mind of the Lord and walk in pride, in anger? No, it means there is something wrong. We'll go deeper. But we have the mind of Christ. Many. They, 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 we have the mind of Christ. It's a good thing to confess it. It's a good thing to say it. You know, we have to confess the word of God, but we need to understand the context of it. What is he talking about? Let's continue. Let's go deeper, right? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1, where we ended on Sunday. And I, brother, could not speak unto you. I was reading um, this one, which is awesome, which is great, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians 3, I've, I've got it here. And so, brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people. This is Paul, right? We started in verse 15. <laughs> verse 15, it is powerful. He says, uh, who, the one who is spiritual, no one can judge him. But here in 1 Corinthians 3, and so brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh. That's what we are talking about, right? As infants in Christ, I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. He's saying, listen, in Christianity, there is solid food, there is milk, right? I have fed you with milk because I want you to get into that place where you are spiritual. Because when you are spiritual, no one can judge you. You become the judge. When you are spiritual, you cannot operate in unforgiveness, in bitterness. Now, then God can begin to release what he wants to release through you. Then prayer changes. It ceases to be begging God to do something. No, you start realizing that all things, all things are yours. All things belong to us. That's what God is after. He wants us to mature. He wants us to grow. He wants us to understand who he is and how. Listen to what he said. I fed you with milk. I fed you with milk. I fed you with milk, not solid food. For you were not ready for solid food. You were not ready for solid food. Why were they not ready for solid food? Even now, you are still not ready. This is Paul. Imagine. After he told them, you, you, we have the mind of Christ, you know, the Holy Spirit, he takes that which is of the Father and makes it known to us, you know, who, the one who is spiritual, no one can judge. He's told them this, now he comes, he says, listen, what I was sharing is for your benefit, right? But this is who I am, I am spiritual. But as for you, listen to what he said, what he said, for you are still of the flesh, for as long as there is jealous and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh? And behaving according to human beings. And behaving according to human beings. What is a Christian? Hmm. 
It says you are behaving according to human beings. It says you are still in the flesh. You are behaving as men. That's what the other version says. It says you act as men. It says we are called to be spiritual, right? It says where there is, where there is still jealousy, quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh? Are you not of the flesh? That's a powerful revelation. What's this? To avoid temptation, right? is to come into the spirit. Temptation always wants to bring me to the flesh. So what is the enemy going to do? He's going to use people. He's going to use your surrounding environment. I was working with somebody <laughs> the other week. Oh man, glory to God. Thank God for meditation. Thank God for, for really spending time in the, in the word of God. You see, it's easy to get into the flesh when you are outside the word of God. To be spiritually minded is to spend time in the word of God. It is to spend time in the word of God. The moment you stop spending time in the word of God, you become carnally minded. People will press the wrong buttons. They will press the wrong buttons. And what the enemy is after, it's your response in the flesh, right? That is what temptation is all about. The enemy is trying to get you into the flesh to disqualify you. Remember, you are running a race. As you are running this race, what is my plan if I'm the devil? I don't want you to finish your rest. I don't want you to accomplish your purpose. So I'm going to use everything in my power to stop you from accomplishing that purpose. Hebrews 12. Let's go to Hebrews 12. Let's go deeper into the word of God today. Glory to God. Hebrews 12. I want us to look at Hebrews 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, verse 1. Hebrews 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing, right, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Say, each and every one of us, we have a race that we are running, right? Now, there is a, a sin that easily beset us. There is a weight that we should lay aside. Now, when you are running, he is saying, we are compassed about by a great cloud of witness, right? These are the words that are in Hebrews chapter 11, the faith hall of fame. Hebrews chapter 11, we meet Cain, oh, sorry, we meet Abel, we meet Enoch, we meet um, Noah, we meet Abraham, we meet Moses, we meet all those heroes of faith. How did they overcome their temptation? It was by faith. To overcome temptation, it is by faith. Glory to God. So what the enemy is after is your faith. He wants you to move in the flesh, to be spiritually minded, is to be faith minded. Glory to God. It's simple, right? We live in an earth that is naturally minded, which is led by senses, which is led by the flesh, right? Since it's led by the flesh, so it's easy. That weight is easy to bring us back. Because tough spies were sent to spy the land. Ten of them came with a negative report. Now, that negative report was, we are like grasshoppers in their sight. The entire camp could not go into the promised land because of the 10 spies. And they were even planning to stone Pastor Moses <laughs> and Aaron and Caleb and Joshua, right? Because of the flesh. Now, in this world where you live in, you are surrounded by the fleshly entities. If you are in the flesh, you will not run your race. This is what we are doing. Sometimes we are running our race, right? We are running our race, you are running your race. And then you are hearing what people are saying in the stands. They are talking bad about you. You stop running. You want to go to the stands. You want to go and correct them. Disqualification, right? So for you to come back and join the race, you have lost the time. So if I'm the devil, I will use people at the stands to try and stop you. I will want you to be fleshly. So that's why you start quarreling, you start fighting, you start wondering. You, you, you also want to, those that are in the stands, right? You want to correct them. You want them to understand who you are. You want to explain yourself to people. He that is spiritual, no one can judge him. So if you are spiritual, you are not focused on the stand. You cannot be distracted, glory to God, by those that are in the stands. Those that are in the faith hall of fame, study them. Abel was not moved by Cain. He did what was right in front of God. Enoch walked with God and he was taken. He was no more. No, built an ark for 100 years when it had never rained. And people were saying, you old fool, what are you doing? But he did not listen to them. Abraham, he came out from a place that was wealthy, filthy rich. He went to a land which was barren. He did not know where he was going. 
He did not listen to people's opinions. He had to run his race. Glory to God. Moses, he was a pharaoh. You know, he had all the women that he could have. Glory to God. He had all the cuisines that he could have. He had everything. The royal chariot was always ready for Moses to go wherever he wanted to do. But he chose to forsake that to suffer with the children of God. He did not allow his flesh to move him. When we say lead us not into temptation, it's not a religious prayer. It is a maturity prayer. Glory to God. It is, Lord, I need to do grow. I need to mature. If I'm working with people, they press the wrong buttons and something inside of me is about to respond, which I know is not love, which I know is not peace. There is something wrong here. I have to change. The problem is I have to change. You say, listen, you don't have control over people, but you have control over you. Glory to God. If you squeeze a lemon, what will come out is a lemon juice. If you squeeze an orange, you will not get a lemon from an orange you will get orange juice. So when people squeeze you, if what comes out is unforgiveness, you are still in the flesh. You are not running the race. Glory to God. You have been disqualified. So what you need is to come back into the race now. You now need to deal with that way. You have to find out what is causing me to be offended. Why I am I offended? Why am I offended? Glory to God. Why am I offended? Listen to what he says. Now, he doesn't leave us hanging, right? Lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily, it says the sin which does so easily beset us. What is the sin? The sin is to get into the flesh. The sin is to operate according to the flesh. The sin is to allow the flesh to detect to us. Many of us, we live our lives on people's opinions. <laughs> Glory to God. That is sin. So you sinner, come out of sin. Live your life according to the word. Glory to God. What is the word of God saying? Start the way. Be spiritually minded. Glory to God. Be spiritually minded. When you are spiritually minded now, then you, you begin to grow. You start discerning what is the good and the perfect will of God for you in Christ Jesus. But, 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 you see, if you cannot overcome those things, they will continuously come your way until you overcome. That's how God, see, right, don't want to cut these things out because I want you to get me. See, what God is doing in our lives, what do you think he's doing in our life? He is making us like Jesus. God is not interested in my financial breakthrough. That is my own responsibility. God is not interested in your marital breakthrough. That is my own responsibility. It's your responsibility. You work out your salvation. Glory to God. God is interested in your maturity, being like Christ. When you are like Christ, you raise the dead. When you are like Christ, you begin to deal with the marriage. Because most of the things that people are dealing with in marriage is immaturity. Most of the things that people are praying for, Lord, financial prosperity. If God lends one million on your lap right now, they won't even see you. A church, the pastor doesn't understand. You know, I have to play golf. You know, me and the happy or me and the wife, you need to be in Dubai. Should we always be in church all the time? See, because still carnal, <laughs> carnally minded, right? So because mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, that one, we give the man or give the man, he cannot envy. So the key issue is this maturity growing up because when you grow up his glory will be revealed in you i will not talk about abraham today i don't have time maybe on sunday glory to god looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith because when we look unto jesus we are changed we become like jesus Christ. not looking at people See, sometimes we want to be the holy spirit right we want to sort them out so we look at them at the crowd today we go there and say, if I tell them like this, tell them like that, you know, you, you want to be the Holy Spirit. Now you, you, you are losing time. See, it's never our responsibility to try and change people. Glory to God. That's why you find so many people are offended. That is the way that easily beset us. When you start looking at people, you're trying to fix them. You're trying to correct them. You're trying to change them. No, that is the job of the Holy Spirit. Your job is to focus on Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of your faith. When you are focused on Jesus Christ, when you are looking unto him, if there is somebody that you need to help as you are running the race, guess what? You are now spiritual. He will tell you, go pick that sister up. Go pick that brother up. Some of us, we have weight. We are carrying people that we shouldn't be carrying. <laughs> the rope glory to god just chop that rope off you know you cannot run with the cops you will fall glory to god you are running with the east tomb <laughs> glory to god oh 20 tomb we are kijima you are running with the cops how can you run your race how can you finish your race you cannot sometimes you need to chop trust god focusing on jesus 
That's how we deal with the sin. That's how we deal with, wait, we don't focus on yourself. Some of us will focus on us. You know, maybe I messed up. I messed up when I was growing up. You know, when I was raising up these children, I could have done this and that. Now you are in a place of condemnation. The Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation. With those that are in Christ Jesus, don't live in your past. If you allow your past, it will influence your presence and your presence will also affect your future. So you will not run your race, right? You are already in temptation. Now you are not winning. Glory to God. You know, so focus on Jesus. And uh, when you focus on Jesus, as you are looking unto Jesus, watch this, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who started it? It's Jesus. Who wrote it down? It's Jesus. <laughs> Who? For the joy that was set before him endured the cross. There was a cross in front of Jesus. He endured the cross. Do you know why? The joy was you and me. We were his crown. Glory to God. He was the only son of the living God. And God wanted a family. He wanted children. Back to the Lord's prayer. Our father. Our father. My father and Jesus' father. We have equal rights. I have equal rights with Jesus. Mm -hmm. What is the problem? Maturity. Growth. Looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross endure the cross. Maybe there is a cross. The cross comes in many ways. Could be a spouse. Could be ungodly children that will never appreciate you, see any worth in you. It could be a boss at work. It could be, it could be you. <laughs> Glory to God. So you need to repent and focus on Jesus. Don't be somebody else. Cross. Glory to God. Be somebody's liberator. And the only way you can be somebody's liberator, take the law out of your eye. Look at Jesus. Glory to God. That's what he was talking about. Taking the law off is looking to Jesus. It's not looking at the law. Looking unto Jesus. There are many people don't understand Christianity. You see, they are under the law. Since they are under the law, they are not focusing on Jesus. To be under the law, it just means to be performance-based. You are looking at how good you are, how great you are. No, you are looking unto Jesus. He is the only one who is great in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. I think I will end here in the name of Jesus. It's been glorious sharing the word of God. May the Lord bless you. Listen, don't be the Holy Spirit. This is what the Holy Ghost has been telling me this week. It says, don't be the Holy Spirit. Don't be the Holy Spirit. See, when the Holy Spirit has come, when the Holy Spirit has come, when the Holy Spirit has come, he will convict the world of sin because they do not know me. Don't be the Holy Spirit, but allow the Holy Spirit to use you to operate in your life. You are God's favorite child in Jesus' mighty name. You are blessed till we meet again. Don't be the Holy Spirit. You are blessed. Glory to God. Amen. And amen.